Alright, so for this time for Arena on a Budget, we're building around one of my favorite cards out of Amonkhet, God Pharaoh's Gift. So God Pharaoh's Gift is a 7-mana artifact, and it says, At the beginning of combat on our turn, we can exile a creature card from our graveyard. If we do, create a token copy of it, except it's a 4-4 black zombie with haste. So God Pharaoh's Gift is very, very powerful and pretty straightforward. Like, if we have a Ravenous Chupacabra in the graveyard, we get to exile that Ravenous Chupacabra from our graveyard, create a token copy of the Ravenous Chupacabra, which will have the same ability, so the same Enter the Battlefield, Destroy a Target Creature ability, but it'll be a 4-4 instead of a 2-2, and it'll have haste, so it can immediately swing in and start attacking. And the really awesome awesome thing about God Pharaoh's Gift as a budget option is we really don't need to run four copies of this rare to make a deck around it because we have Gate to the Afterlife. So Gate to the Afterlife is a three mana artifact that says whenever a non-token creature we control dies, we can gain one life and then draw a card and discard a card. If we have six or more creatures in our graveyard, we can pay two mana, tap the Gate to the Afterlife, sacrifice it, and go tutor God Pharaoh's Gift out of our deck, out of our hand, or out of our graveyard. So basically Gate to the Afterlife allows us to build around God Pharaoh's Gift without actually having four copies of this rare. We only need two copies of this rare to make a whole deck around it, which is pretty awesome. And then the rest of our deck is pretty straightforward. It's either just ways to fill up the graveyard, like Stitcher Supplier and Meyer Triton, which when they enter the battlefield, mill stuff over into our graveyard, or stuff we can bring back from the graveyard to get good abilities, like Ravenous Chupacabra, like Combat Celebrant, which we can exert to have an extra combat step, which actually re-triggers our God Pharaoh's gift. So we can bring back Combat Celebrant, exert it, and then we get another battle step, which gives us another trigger off of God Pharaoh's gift, so we get to re animate two things. Draco Set's a really awesome reanimation target because even though it comes back as a 4-4 instead of a 7-7, we still get its attack trigger ability. So we get to deal 4 damage to something and 3 damage to two other things. So we can either just do a ton of damage to our opponent or we can start sniping down their creatures. And we also have Massacre Worm, which is sort of a board wipe we can pull out of the graveyard. It, it enters the battlefield, gives everything minus 2, minus 2, and then whenever one of our opponent's creatures dies, they lose 2 life. So it's a good way to kind of clear the board of a bunch of small creatures. You know, if our opponent has a bunch of goblins or whatever, we can pull out the Massacre Worm we need it, wipe the board, and really if our opponent's just at low life, we can bring back the Masker Worm, and then they can't really block because they'll lose life if they trade creatures, stuff like that. But something else that we can bring back and a really key part of making our deck work are our one-mana cyclers. So that's Desert Ceridon, Horror of the Broken Lands, and also... Draineth Stinger. So these cards all have cycling for one mana, meaning we can pay one mana, uh, one red mana in Desert Ceridon's case, one black mana in Horror of the Broken Lands case, and one mana of any color in Draineth Stinger's case. Discard these cards and then draw a new card off the top. And so not only do we fill up our graveyard with creatures by cycling these cards, which is great for our Gate to the Afterlife, it also allows us to run less lands. We're only a 20 land deck, despite having, you know, seven drops in our deck and stuff like that. Because we're running all of these one mana cyclers, we're still pretty much guaranteed to hit our land drop because we can just cycle these, get them into our graveyard. Uh, they also effectively make our deck smaller, so our deck is basically 12 cards smaller. I mean, that's with the caveat that we actually have the time to cycle. If we're up against it, like a really aggressive deck that's not giving us much time to actually cycle our cards, then it, then they're not really just, just shrinking the deck for free. But in general, it's going to make our deck smaller, which means we're more likely to hit our gates to the afterlife, we're more likely to hit our mill creatures, we're more, more likely to hit all our payoffs, and especially our land drops. Being able to only run 20 lands in our deck, instead of having to run, like, you know, 23, 24, like this deck would normally take, means that our cards like Stitcher Supplier, our cards like Mired Triton, are all going to be hitting creatures much more often uh, when they mill. We're much more likely to actually mill over a bunch of creatures, which again, is great for turning on our Gates of the Afterlife, just because almost all of our deck is creatures. And we're not just laser-focused in on our God Pharaoh's Gift Plan, because we have cards like Kroxa, Titan of Death's Hunger, we have cards like Ox of Agonis, which are other payoffs for filling up our graveyard, we can escape these back over and over and over again, so all these cards were cycling, all these cards were milling over with Stitcher Supplier and Meyer Triton, um, they can fuel these escapes, so we can bring these cards back repeatedly, so even if we can't get our God Pharaoh's Gift online, no, our opponent, you know, blows it up, or our opponent exiles it out of our deck, or whatever, we just, we just can't find our God Pharaoh's Gift, we still have the backup plan of these escape creatures, which are pretty powerful on their own, especially Kroxa, uh, can really just finish off the game on his own without an issue, uh, Ox of Agonis is more of a card advantage engine, where we get it back, kind of refill our hand, can discard some creatures, get more stuff in the graveyard, so kind of more of an engine piece than a finisher, but both of them allow us to have another angle of attack than just our God Pharaoh's Gift, which is really powerful and means our deck can be pretty flexible. Besides that, in the mana base, we are running some rare lands, but if you don't have all of these rare lands, it's okay. You can still try the deck out. You can try it with uh, some some of the come to play tapped lands, and it will depower the deck a bit. Just run as many rare lands as you've got, and then fill in the gaps with like Evolving Wilds or uh, Rakdos Guildgate or, you know, uh, the end of the battlefield tapped and gain a life lands, and you'll be in pretty good shape. In the sideboard, we got three copies of Vampire the Dire Moon. 
Rune, so this is something we'll bring in against aggressive decks, decks like Burn, because one, it'll trade with their creatures early, and a 1-1 a one, one Life Flinker that is going to trade with their creatures is not bad, or going to eat a removal spell instead of having that Burn come out of our face is not bad, and then eventually when we bring it back with our Godfarer's Gift, it's going to be a 4-4 Life Linker, which is just really, really backbreaking against those aggressive decks. We have one copy of Soul Guide Lantern, and we would have additional copies, but we really want as many cards in our deck to be creatures as possible, so we have this one copy of Soul Guide Lantern because it's really good at shutting down graveyard decks, but besides that, uh, we have... Uh, two copies of Timurit, Chosen from Death, is another way we can hate on graveyards. It's not as good as Soul Guide Lantern. You can't just, like, exile the whole graveyard for one mana. But it is a creature. It is something that will fill up our graveyard for Gate to the Afterlife. It is something we can reanimate back. And it does have an activated ability where we can exile cards out of our opponent's graveyard. We have two copies of Brain Maggot, which is a card that enters the battlefield and snipes a card out of our opponent's hand as long as it's on the battlefield. So this is good against, like, more combo-y decks. We can take, like, a Muxus out of our opponent's hand, or we can bring it in against control decks to take, like, removal spells out of their hand or whatever and again it has the same sort of idea as uh, vampire the dark moon where on its front half it's fine but then eventually we can also is something we can get back out of the graveyard and a 4-4 with this ability that's kind of hard to kill is even better kite cell freebooter same idea this is a lot better against control decks because not only is it kind of the same idea as brain maggot it enters the battlefield steals something out of our opponent's hand but also it's a flyer so it's got a really nice body to be bringing back as a 4-4 uh, with that flying ability bring this in against control decks planeswalker decks stuff like that torch fiend which is a creature we can sacrifice to blow up an artifact so any sort of artifact based deck this gives us some removal and we have two copies of Unchained Berserker, which is really good against uh, control decks with like Planeswalkers, cards like Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. Uh, control decks are kind of on the rise right now because Field of the Dead has just been banned, so control decks can finally sort of compete in the format. Um, so if we are up against a white-based control deck, Unchained Berserker can dodge a lot of the removal, can be a really big pain, and again, it's just something that's good to bring back with Godfarer's Gift. You know, on its front half, it's a 1-1 one -one that's a 3-1 when it's attacking, but when we bring it back as a 4-4, it's going to be a 6-4 attacking with protection from white so if we're up against like white weenie or something like that is even good uh, it's just a really big great finisher that's hard to answer for certain decks and so yeah that's going to wrap up the deck tech so this deck is running six mythics and three rares our six mythics are one copy of masker worm one copy of combat celebrant two copies of oxvagonus and two copies of croxa uh, ox and croxa are definitely the, the most important pieces here so if you have to kind of budget your mythics those are the ones i would go for first and then for our rares we're running one copy of draco seth and two copies of god bearer skip so again the absolute mandatory pieces of this deck, I think, are the two Godfarer's Gifts and the two Croxes and the two Oxifagonuses. The rest of the rares and mythics are kind of replaceable if you want to try to slot in some other stuff, if you just already have some cards. Uh, and we'll talk about at the end of the video, we'll talk about some potential upgrades you can make to the deck. If you want to spend a few more wild cards on this deck, or if you just already have some other rares, we'll talk about some good inclusions and if you already have some of those rares, you can maybe slot out the Draco Sleth and slot in one of those rares instead. Same with the Masker Worm. Same with Combat Celebrant. So, we'll talk about that at the end of the video, potential upgrades, but for now we'll just jump to the gameplay, so here we go, on to game one. Alright, playing some Rakdos Godbearer's Gift. We will keep this. We don't have a lot going on, but we do have these two cyclers for redraws. And, uh, I mean, that's not the worst place to be. Eventually we can get these Ravenous Chupacabras. Alright. Well, there goes... I don't know. I guess probably... If they're a control deck, probably our Dranith Stinger. If they're a creature-based deck, I guess a Ravenous Chupacabra. Not, not too bad either way. I would expect them to be a control deck with a watery grave to start things off, yeah. Alright, play Mountain, pass turn. So our opponent is probably on control. Yep, Grixis Control. One of the more popular decks in the format at the moment. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna cycle this main phase in case we hit a one drop. Alright, we didn't hit a one drop, but we did hit another cycler, which is fine. But yeah, especially after Field of the Dead is gone, now Control has a much more reasonable game plan. Before, they just, like, they would answer all your resources, but then you, you know, you, uh, <laughs> you, you play Field of the Dead and you don't have to do anything. So, alright, let's see if they've got an answer to this Gift of the Afterlife. We're not too far away. We've already got four, four creatures in the graveyard thanks to our cyclers, so. And they can, I mean, they could have, like, a Brazen Borrower and then, like, counter it on the way back down, but as far as just destroying an artifact, I don't think they have much in their main deck. Liliana, okay. We're actually okay with this. Yeah, okay. We'll discard the Ravenous Chupacabra. We're almost there. We're at five creatures now. Okay! We just need to... just need to mill one creature here, and we'll be in business. Alright, and that is one creature, and so now we can just... fire off this... Gift of the Afterlife, search my library... 
get the gift, <laughs> God Pharaoh's gift. Uh, yeah, go to combat. I think we'll get back the horror of the broken lands. Hit this Liliana down to one. And play the Blood Crypt tapped. Alright, well, that's, <laughs> it's gone pretty well. Probably just going to discard this Ravenous Chupacabra. I mean, I guess it's something we can actually cast next turn, but we're probably just going to get back this Ox soon, so... We're not too far away from casting this God Pharaoh. You know what, we're going to discard the God Pharaoh's Gift. We're, we're three lands away from that, so... We'll, we'll just we'll just discard it, that's fine. Alright, well, do we want to get back Ox of Agonis? If we do that... How many... We have to exile everything except the Ox to do that? Uh, I don't know if that's a good idea. So we'll just... Go to combat, get back the Dranith Stinger, and our opponent scoops it up. Alright. Okay, so, our opponent is on Grixis control, and we just sort of, uh, messed him up here. So we get to bring in the Kite Sail Freebooters. One thing about this deck, it's pretty hard to sideboard, because cards like Desert Saradon, cards like, uh, Our, or, uh, Horror of the Broken Lands, and cards like, uh, Dranith Stingers, they're actually kind of part of our mana base, in a weird sense, because... Their cycling one allows us to, um, to to run so few lands, so we can't really. We can maybe like side one of them out, but then besides that, we have to start taking stuff like kind of fundamental pieces of our deck out. So it's kind of hard to side in this deck. So we're not going to usually side up, up more than like three cards, but we will go up these guys self rebooters. They seem really really good. So we'll go down one of our cyclers. Desert Sheridan is probably our worst. Go uh, down. Hmm, they're going to bring in graveyard hate. So what is the worst? based on that. I guess a lot of decks are just running um, Graph Digger's Cage as Graveyard Hate, so maybe we go down one Ox and one Combat Celebrant, run it like that. Graph Digger's Cage actually doesn't hurt us. Like, it, we actually pretty much completely get around Graph Digger's Cage, except for uh, our escape creatures, Ox of Agonis and, um, and our Titan. Um, we're actually going to keep this. We do have a cycler, so hopefully we can hit a second land here. It's a little risky, but if we get to a second land, we get to Cathartic Reunion, discard Ox, Pagonis, and uh, get just a ton of creatures in our graveyard. All right, we are going to play Blood Crypt untapped. Come on. <laughs> if we hit a land, it's okay. If we hit even a cycler, it's probably fine. Thought Erasure. Well, we do need to cycle in response. Uh, it's not a land. I guess at least it's something we can cast, but... We'll see what our opponent takes. I imagine they take, like, Cathartic Reunion. Probably the best thing to take. Maybe Kite Sail Freebooter if they just don't want their hand plundered. But that's just a creature in a graveyard if they take that. Okay, they take the Kite Sail Freebooter, sure. Okay, land's good. So we play the land, play Cathartic Reunion. Discard Ox. I'm kind of afraid to discard God Pharaoh's Gift, because if they go, like, Ashiok here, they just eat our God Pharaoh's Gift forever. So we're actually going to discard the Chupacabra. Alright, past turn. It's arguable we should have gone uh, Mire Triton there instead. Okay, Narse is fine. But the reason the reason that was kind of arguable is then we would have something on the board to pressure. Alright, Kite Sail Freebooter is pretty good. So we're going to go Mountain Kite Sail Freebooter. Go after our opponent's hand. Okay, we'll take the Vraska's Contempt because we have to. Otherwise they just kill the Freebooter. Stitcher Supplier. And, yeah, I mean, we're getting there. We just need a uh, Gate to the Afterlife now, and we're pretty much in business. Do want to make sure we kill this Star set before we get the Ox back so we can actually draw cards. Wow, and a Gate, okay. Uh, yeah, so we'll go to Combat. Attack Star set. Play Blood Crypt untapped. Play Mire Triton. Just gonna basically put a bunch of creatures on the board to pressure this Nickel Bolas when it comes down. Mire Triton. Hopefully they don't like languish us here, but they, you know, they do have a draw. We'll see. If they just go land Nickel Bolas, we, we can just beat it down immediately. Okay, they play nothing, which is also fine. Uh, we might get back Ox this turn, but first we'll start things off by attacking. Alright, when it takes it, we'll cycle Ceridon, cycle Horror of the Broken Lands. 
Yeah, and I think we just get back Ox now. Get back Ox. Discard a bunch of... or exile a bunch of stuff we don't need. Primarily non-creatures as much as we can, but... If we need to exile a creature or two, it's fine. Yeah, I think we, we've hit all the non-creatures now, so let's get a Ceridon as well. Get back Ox. Let's see if this gets countered. It doesn't. Alright, we get to discard these three and draw a fresh hand. Alright, play Blood Crypt untapped. Life doesn't super matter against our opponent's deck. They're not going to kill us, kill us. Alright, opponent's going to... That's actually a pretty good removal spell, sure. So, Ox is gone for good, but it's still fine. Hopefully we can get them to tap out here so we can actually resolve this Gate to the Afterlife. And the Gate is pretty bad against our deck, except it hits Gate to the Afterlife. Alright, they are going to tap out, sure. And all will bow before Nicol Bolas, sure. <laughs> so here we get to cycle Draineth Stinger. Wow, they're actually going to kill the Kite Sail. Sure, okay. We'll cycle. Okay, Kite Sail Freebooter is actually pretty good. We're not going to do it this turn. This turn, we're, because they're tapped out, we're going to get around their negate right now. Uh, search your library. Get the God Pharaoh's Gift. And what do we want to get out of the graveyard? I guess maybe just get back a kite sail seems fine. So big ol' hasty kite sail. We'll get a Vraska's Contempt out of their hand. We can just not cast spells, so we don't care about all these counter spells. So yep, opponent scoops it up. All right. So we just completely dominated control. <laughs> like that was not even moderately close. We just completely destroyed control, which I think is actually pretty much normal for this deck. We have a lot of recursive threats in the form of, of our Oxes and our Croxes. Um, so, the, you know, just counter spells are pretty bad against this. They need, like, exile removal specifically, which they do have some of, like, Vraska's Contempt, but if they're spending their whole turn Vraska's Contempting our, our Ox that we got back for two mana, that's not so bad. It, I mean, it already drew us cards, it already kind of set us up, so... Uh, we don't really care all that much about removal spells, and, and even Wraths we can recover from pretty easy. It just, you know, kills, like, our Stitcher suppliers and fills up our graveyard. So we just have a lot of recursion is basically what it comes down to. And, uh, you know, that would be answered by Graveyard Hate, but a lot of decks are running Grafticker's Cage as Graveyard Hate because it hits most things at the end, and it also hits Collected Company, so it kind of, like, functions as Graveyard Hate and also uh, Collected Company Hate. But... And our deck in specific, we don't get stuff back from the graveyard. We exile it out of the graveyard and make a token copy. So Grafdigger's Cage does nothing against us. So they need, like, actual graveyard hate, like Ashiok or uh, Rest in Peace or, you know, stuff that actually, like, gets rid of our graveyard, not just stops us from reanimating stuff. So all in all, yeah, we, we just pretty much completely shut down this, uh, <laughs> this control deck. It, it felt very one-sided, and yeah, <laughs> not too bad. Sweet. All right, playing some Rakdos Scott Pharaoh's Gift against Matt Maddock. We can not keep a Zero Lander. <laughs> Even with our deck with all of its cyclers and one drops, Zero Lander ain't going to cut it. But this looks pretty good, actually, this Two Lander. I think we go down... Hmm, I'm not sure if we go down the Desert Ceridon or go down the Ox Vagonis. We are pretty far away from Ox Vagonis, and we don't have any way to discard it in hand. But if we did draw if we did draw a discard spell, it would be pretty good. But I think, I, think we'll, I think we'll go down the Ox. That's probably fine. We can cast everything else in our hands, so... We'd probably just go Stitcher Supplier, followed up by Kroxa, and take it from there. Okay, opponent probably on Sacrifice, which I do think we're okay against. Stitcher Supplier, fill up our graveyard a bit. Wow, okay. It's pretty rare for us to hit zero uh, creatures. We are, like, super packed full of creatures. Uh, we have 30 in our deck. Uh, that's why we're running all these cyclers, just, just so we can run less lands and <laughs> mill over creatures more likely. So, But it it does happen on occasion. Alright, there goes our Mire Triton, I guess. Maybe our Croaks, if they just don't want to discard next turn. Because we are a bit away from a Croaks, although Mire Triton does pretty much get us there by itself. Okay. Sure. And a, oh, a Scooze is really good. Yeah, that might, uh, that might wreck us here. So I think we go go to combat. No attacks. Huh. Do we... How do we... I think we're going to go Blood Crypt. And we're actually going to pass the turn here. 
Our goal is going to be to cycle this desert serenade. We have to find removal for this scavenging goose before we really do anything else. Because uh, our opponent is just going to be attacking our graveyard here. So if our, I mean, but if they do spend their turn just eating away at our graveyard. That's not the worst thing in the world. Yep, eats your graveyard. So we have to we have to get a uh, we have to cycle our way into a removal spell. All right, and they don't attack, so we will cycle. I'm just gonna eat it out of the graveyard, which is fine. Not a removal spell, but it is something we can cast next turn. Okay, Cathartic Reunion is actually pretty good, so we're gonna go Cathartic. Hmm, do we want a Temple of Malice first? No, we're gonna Cathartic Reunion, Draineth Stinger, and actually cycle the Temple of Malice as well. Okay, Dragon Skull Summit. All right, and we got another Cycler. Again, our our whole plan here is just to find um. Find a Chupacabra so we can kill the Scavenging Ooze, and then we can proceed from there. But until then, they're just going to be eating our graveyard, and we can't really do our main game plan. Uh, yeah, we're just going to take the four. We can play a Death Toucher next turn so we don't get keep getting you know slammed by the Scavenging Ooze. All right, our opponent is tapped out. Yeah, okay. So let's see. We maybe can do something in the interim here while they're tapped out. Okay, um... We probably have to play the Death Toucher here. Can't really... We couldn't really cycle into the pig or anything. So I think we go... Yeah, we're going to go Mire... Tr hmm. We're going to cycle first. Alright, and... Play a Fable Passage. Crack it. Go get a Swamp. Play the Mire Triton. Gain a little life. I have a Death Toucher on the battlefield, and we didn't mill over our Chupacabra, which is good. Pass the turn. We are probably going to have to just trade here, because we don't want to take five to the face. Sure. Get rid of our opponent's Lovestruck Beast. Opponent starts eating away at our graveyard, but we will find a Chupacabra sooner or later. That is one upside of running so many cycling cards, is our deck is effectively, you know, 12 cards... Uh, smaller as long as we have the time to actually cycle. We're not under like intense pressure here, so yeah, opponent can sure gobble away at our graveyard. All right, cycle the horror. We've got two draws out of here. Do we hit a chupacabra? We haven't milled any. All right, another cycler and a croxa. Yeah, I think we go gate to the afterlife, and we can desert Ceridon as well. We couldn't have played the. We couldn't have played the the Chupacabra this turn anyway if we like cycled our Desert Herodon and drew it, so we'll just wait one more turn here. <laughs> Opponent gets to eat more of our graveyard, which is fine. No attacks. We're about halfway, yeah, we're about halfway through our deck, and we, we have three Chupacabras, so we're getting pretty close to the point where we're almost certain to hit one in the next few cards, unless they're all just chilling at the bottom of our deck. We should have statistically already hit one, but... Eh, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they're a little deeper than than you'd expect. But once we get the scoos off the battlefield, we should be in business. We are gonna... we are gonna... block here. Are we? Yeah. We're gonna block here. That's fine. Just to save the life, really. Our opponent gets to eat it all out of the graveyard, whatever we mill over, but that's okay. We do get an extra draw because of it, too, thanks to Gate to the Afterlife. So we get another draw to Chupacabra. Alright, and we actually didn't mill over any of our Chupacabras, which is nice. Draw a card. Wow. Uh, we'll discard the Combat Celebrant. We would like to keep that, but if a card's gonna die out of this hand, you know, uh, we'd rather it be Combat Celebrant rather than Ox Vagonis. Because we're getting pretty close to... Oh, Well, that's a little sad. Okay. Opponent blows up the gate to the afterlife. Sure, sure, sure. Runs out of Gilded Goose. So they're all out of action. We just need our Chupacabra. <laughs> All right, cycle. We're leaving a a couple mana to eat away at our graveyard, which is fine. Okay, there's the Choops. Choops is online. We will kill the scavenging ooze, and now, now we're off to the races. If we draw a land, we can just fire off this Oxfagonus and immediately start going after our opponent hardcore. Kill the scavenging ooze. Get that guy out of here. All right. Ooh. Okay. Now, now we're in business. All right, opponent. What's up? <laughs> All right, so we will we drew the land. Sweet. So we're gonna go Oxvagonus, 
Draw a fresh hand, get some stuff in our graveyard. Including a Kroxa. Oh, and there's a Gate to the Afterlife, which we can activate next turn. Hit our opponent for two. Create some food. Opponent's just fooding it up. Sure, that'll buy him some turns, and it does give them a good amount of mana here. Hopefully they don't just top tech another Scooze. That would be the worst thing to happen. And we are just going to fire off this Gate to the Afterlife as soon as possible because of that. Do we have six creatures in the graveyard? We have a... We, okay, Kenrith. Well, they can get back their Scooze with Kenrith. Not this turn, but next turn. So we probably do need to do it now. So we're going to go... Let me just make sure we actually have six creatures in the graveyard. So one, two, three, four, five... Oh, do we only have five? One, two, three, four, five. Oh no, we got six. All right, I just counted bad. All right, gate to the afterlife. Activate it. I think we're just gonna grab. I think they're both in our graveyard. Yeah. All right. Get, uh, God Vera's gift. We're going to get back the Combat Celebrants. They do get to just eat one of our creatures here with a Kenrith, but that's okay. All attack and exert the God Pharaoh's Gift. Yep, so opponent does get to eat one of the creatures here, but not two, because then they'll have to trade the Kenrith on the second one. All right, opponent's soaking up a bit of damage, sure. All right, go to our second combat step. We get to attack again. This time we'll get back... I'm going to get back Horror... Ah, uh, we'll get back Stitcher Suppliers, fine. Another 4-4 four, four fills up our graveyard a bit more, so even if they do get back their Scoos, hopefully we'll have enough cards in there to do stuff with. Yep, get in with the rest of them. I can't really block here without trading. We'd love to draw another Ravenous Chupacabra to kill this Kenrith, but... I mean, if they're just going to spend their whole turn reanimating Scoos, that takes up most of their mana, and they can only eat, like, one or two things from the graveyard after that. So... I'm not in the worst shape. We could have gotten back Horror of the Broken Lands last turn, which, with this Cathartic Reunion, would have been a big boy uh, that our opponent would have to block, but... Uh, hopefully our opponent doesn't try to reanimate one of our creatures with Kenrith. That does not <laughs> that does not work how they want it to. Kenrith actually reads, 5 mana put a target creature from a graveyard onto the battlefield under its owner's control. So if our opponent tries to activate Kenrith here and steal one of our creatures from our graveyard, it actually just gives it to us. <laughs> Oh, they drew another Mythos. Okay, okay. That's pretty good. Okay. So our opponent's just not going to get back... Okay, Draineth Stinger, sure. Probably just going to get back Croaks to this turn, and if that's the case, we'll just go Cathartic Reunion. Cathartic Reunion. Discard, discard. Draw three cards. Ooh, another Gate to the Afterlife. We can't really use it this turn, though, so we're just going to go Mountain Kroxa. Exile a bunch of nonsense. That doesn't matter. Steal the last card out of our opponent's hand. So, if it's some kind of uh, artifact hate spell, they got to use it now. Okay, no, it was just a Plukernos. That's fine. We will attack with Ravenous Chupacabra. I guess we attack with everything, you know what? Yeah, if the opponent wants to eat one of our 4-4s, four that's fine. I think we need to get in some damage here. The more damage we do, the better, because we have this Croaks on the battlefield that's going to be pressuring them. Sure. This is going to mill us some more. Alright, so the opponent's going to chump and eat the Stitcher Supplier, which mills us a bit more. Should make us fairly... Fairly, uh, scooze proof. Although they're probably just gonna get back this Plukernos, I assume. Alright, they gained a bit of life, sure. We can just fire off the Gate to the Afterlife next turn, which outpaces Plukernos pretty well. Alright, opponent, here comes the Plukernos, I assume. Yep, Plukernos. Oh, Chupacabra's great. Do we want to get rid of the Chupacabra, or the Plukernos, or the Kenrith? We could also Gate to the Afterlife. Is there anything we can do with Gate to the Afterlife that's better? Hmm. I think we want to get the Plukernos off the battlefield so we can attack with impunity here. So we'll go Ravenous Chupacabra, blow up the Plukernos, 
And our opponent scoops it up. All right. Okie dokie. So, our opponent is on Abzan midrange, seems like. Um, Unchained Berserker might be good. It, well, I guess it doesn't actually dodge through Mythos of Nethroi, even though they use white man on that. It's not actually a white card. Um, we might have not <laughs> not many good options here. Like, maybe a Brain Maggot? Although they are running a good amount of removal, though. We could take Timoret to attack their graveyard. I guess we'll go up to Timorets as some incidental graveyard hate. We won't go up to Soul Guide Lantern. They're not graveyard-focused enough for us to want that, but we'll go up to Timorets and we'll go down one of our Cyclers, and because they're probably bringing in a Graftigger's Cage, we'll go down one Ox, and we'll run it like that. We do dodge Graftigger's Cage in most ways, but our Ox and our Kroxa do not, so yeah, we'll keep this. Looks pretty good. We've got Cycle and the Cycle and the... Uh, whatever. Gilded Goose, sure. Yep, yep, yep. We will go... Plan on cycling this horde. This Ravenous Chupacabra was a pretty good draw, too. They do have some problematic threats that it'll be nice to get rid of. Okay, we're just going to Ashiok turn one, sure. We can... I mean, we don't have to mill ourselves, so we're going to just go Horror of the... Well, okay, let's go to their end phase first. Cycle Horror. Draw a card. Then we can play... Play our Mire Triton. Even though this does mill us and they get some free value out of the Ashiok, this does pres uh, pressure the Ashiok pretty well. They're going to have to choose to trade a creature or um, lose or take two damage to their Ashiok. So, all in all, we're okay with this. We're just going to play the mid range plan here. They do have actual graveyard removal, though, which is something. You know, a lot of decks are only running like Crafticker's Cage. <laughs> Another Scoos. Alright, so they're all, they got all the graveyard removal this game. But we do get to attack in here and pressure the Ashiok, get it down to two loyalty, which dramatically reduces how annoying it'll be. Ah, well, it hit some good stuff there. Sure, go to combat. Well, eventually go to combat. Alright, go to combat, attack our opponent's Ashiok. Are they going to just trade in the Gilded They are, okay. And we'll go Draineth Stinger as a creature. Blood Crypt tapped. Pass turn. Next turn we can uh, Ravenous Chupacabra, blow up the Scavenging Ooze, and hopefully be able to get in some damage on this Ashiok. Thoughtseize would be bad here. If they get Thoughtseize the Chupacabra out of our hand, we are not in good shape. Alright, looks like they may be holding up a removal spell. We will go Chupacabra, blow up our opponent's Scoos, try to kill their Ashiok. That is the cool thing about this deck is, okay, if our opponent does shut down our graveyard, we can just sort of play a mid-range game until we get that stuff off the battlefield. Okay, Cry the Canary, <laughs> that is that is pretty brutal. Um, yeah, I guess we, is there anything we want to eat out of their graveyard? We could take the Skoo so they can't reanimate it, I guess. But uh, you know what, we're going to go Timoret plus Combat Celebrant and hope that they have... They don't have a second uh, Cry the Carnarium in hand. If they just got a removal spell here, it's not the worst. Pelucranos. Alright. He big. We will Cathartic Reunion. Discard and discard. Oh, good draw. Blood Crypt untapped. Ravenous Chupacabra, which gets up the toughness for our Timoret, which is nice. Then we get to attack and attack. We're not going to exert this turn, because that just gets us two extra points of damage, which isn't really worth it, but we'll probably get certain next turn. Oh, cry to... Man, they got a second cry. That is brutal. We don't even get to eat the Blucranos out of their graveyard. Well, okay. Play the horror. Pass turn. That was... That might have been enough. Our opponent has had literally four hate spells in a row. <laughs> four of their sideboard cards in a row. And that might be enough to get us here. Alright, our opponent didn't have the six mana for... For their Pelucranos, which is something. Stitcher Supplier. Ooh, yes! Get back our Kroxa. Uh, exile, 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 and exile. Well, I guess we gotta exile it all. Make our opponent discard. Ooh. 
Ooh, Ashiok, that's nice. And no tax. We can, if we if we draw a discard spell, we can pump up this horror big enough to get through the Kenrith. Frosca. Alright, it's probably going to attack our Kroxa, I assume. Yep. But that means we do get to kill the Vraska. Well, that was a pretty good draw. That means we don't get to kill the Kroxa. Or the Vraska. Um, so we're going to... Yeah, so we're going to... Hmm. We're going to go to combat, attack with both at the Vraska. We do get to kill the Kenrith here if they just... Yeah, so we're going to cycle the Draneth. Pump up our horror. Psych oh, that was a perfect draw. Now we get to double pump it and it doesn't even die? Wow. Pretty good. And, yeah, yeah just play this tapped. Next turn we can God Pharaoh's Gift. Manually. Our opponent does get to get back their, uh, their lad here if they feel like it. Wow, okay. Well, unless they drew a land, now they don't get to get back Pelucranos. So, Okay. Okay, they just have one in hand. We can kill that with a... <laughs> we can kill that with our boy. Oh, Brutal. Brutal. <laughs> brutal. Jeez. Man. That is... That was a... Ugh. That might do it. Jeez. What a perfect draw. Well... Shoot. I guess we attacked the Frosca? Okay. Oh, yeah. That's right. That was kind of stupid. <laughs> All right. Oof. I guess they can't get back their other Pelucranos in the meantime. They can't just fight our horror, I guess, but that'll put fuel in the graveyard for our Kroxa. Alright, opponent thought Caesars for no real value. I guess they keep upticking this Frosca, which is not good for us. Sure, they fight the horror, that's fine. Let's see, do we have another... Yeah, we haven't exiled our other God's Pharaoh's Gift, right? Right, so we're still live to draw our other God's Pharaoh's Gift or any of our uh, gates to the afterlife. And those will be pretty good. Well, it's just going to sack the Pelucranos. Makes sense. It's already kind of done its thing. Oh, well, I guess that does let us get back Krosa, doesn't it? All right. Crack the Fable Passage. <laughs> so, it is... Okay, and our opponent scoops it up. <laughs> all right, so Abzan midrange. Our opponent had all of the hate spells in the entire world, and we still managed to win. I mean, good God. They went... Let's see. Let's see exactly what they did here. They went Scoos into Ashiok, into Cry the Canarium, into Cry the Canarium, and then they had another Ashiok in hand that I think we... Where is it? There was another Ashiok at some point. Oh yeah, right here. They had all the hate spells they could ever want, and we still took it down. So that, I think, shows a really cool side of this deck where we are graveyard base, but we can also just kind of shift into this, oh, our opponent has a, a scavenging ooze. Well, let's stop filling up the graveyard for now and, and get some removal and get that off the battlefield. We can kind of go mid-range in between. So it's not like we're full-on, like, dredgy, if you shut down our graveyard, we're dead sort of idea. We can just shift into a uh, into a kind of mid-rangey plan and still perform pretty well. And we were able to actually keep up with a deck that's dedicated to mid-range, this, this Abzan mid-range deck that has no other plan except mid-range, and we were still able to keep up with it. Um, even after getting, like, three for one twice by Cry the Carnarium, Ashiox eating our graveyard, scavenging ooze, it just, we, we took it down. So, yeah, I'm... Uh, <laughs> Pretty impressed by this deck. <laughs> Rakdos, God Pharaoh's Gift. Not bad at all. Alright, playing some Rakdos, God Pharaoh's Gift against Gigantosaurus, and we will play first. Okay, sure. We do have a, a kind of a combo here. If we were able to get Gate to the Afterlife down before we Kroxa, Kroxa is sacrificing itself, also triggers Gate to the Afterlife, gives us another, uh, gives us some life gain, gives us another trigger, but we will just go Blood Crypt, Stitcher Supplier. We don't draw another two drop. We are just gonna fire off this Croxa, just so we can curve Croxa and uh, K to the afterlife. But if you do draw like another two drop or one drop, we'll probably do that instead of Croxa. Well, we did not. So Croxa, make our opponent discard. Hit our opponent for one and pass turn. Well, we can't get down this K to the afterlife next turn. Well. We got two, actually. <laughs> Alright, Gate to the Afterlife, hit our opponent for one, fast turn. Gruel aggro deck. Wow, still nothing. Okay. Um, well, I guess we just play another Gate to the Afterlife. Blood Crypt tapped. We're not going to run out this Ravenous Chupacabra. Uh, just as a 2 2. We'd rather kill something on the way down, so. Let's see if they have a questing. What are they doing? 
Alright, well, uh, we'll just keep attacking, I guess. Still can't get our Kroxa back, unfortunately. Even if we crack this Fable Passage, so we'll just pass a turn. Because that'll only put... Oh, okay, Collected Company, sure. Well, maybe we should have left Citrus Supplier untapped because of that. Oh my gosh, what... What hits? Holy crap, well, Clothus is going to be a problem for us, for sure. Oh, they ate the Godfarer's Gift, alright. Well, we might be able to get back to Croaks in the next turn, depending on how this goes. Because we do get to Fable Passage, which leaves us just one card away from Croaksing. Uh, I guess we can eventually hard cast the Strike of Seth. <laughs> which, I mean, I, I think Red Green probably has problems trying to deal with, right? Fable Passage. Go and get a Swamp. We have drawn a lot of lands, that's for sure. Cycler. Oh my. <sighs> okay, well. We're going to continue to draw lands. Holy moly. We will go Ravenous Chupacabra. Hit our opponent. Well, we have drawn a ridiculous number of lands for a 20 land deck. Pretty insane. And we'll just pass the turn. Our opponent probably has another Collected Company. And they do get to just keep sniping our graveyard with this... Clothis, but I guess, I mean, if we just slow things down enough that we can hard cast this Draco Seth, I don't know if they can deal with that. Like, I, I, they might just have nothing in their deck that can deal with a Draco Seth. Ronus is pretty big. Sure. Opponent eats our Kroxa, sure. That's fine. Alright, we will block and block, soak up some damage from the Gruul Spro Breaker if we can. They might just have us dead here. Oh, wow. Okay, well, we can't can't beat, uh... I guess we actually don't die, do we? Okay. So we just barely live. We get to draw... Yep. Draw a card. Drain a Stinger to the graveyard. Draw a card. Dracuseth to the graveyard. We can get back Dracuseth next turn. Although they have a bunch of indestructible threats, so it's not the best thing in the world. Draw a card. Discard the land. I think we can actually hard cast the ox eventually, so. Discard the cathartic reunion. And we can crack the gate to the afterlife now. Search our library. I guess our opponent actually ate one of our Godbearer's gifts. Oh, that's actually pretty bad for us. So we'll go Stitcher Supplier. We'll go. Ox of Agonis. Draw three cards. Get back Dracoseth. Attack with Dracoseth. Although I guess we don't even get to kill the Gruul Sp Spellbreaker, do we? Huh. Yeah, I think we're actually just dead here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that was not great. <laughs> <laughs> they got to eat our... If we were able to get two Godfarer's Gifts back, we could have probably could have probably lived, but the fact that they exiled our Godfarer's Gift out of our deck, or out of our graveyard with their Clothis is pretty bad, so Clothis is actually a huge problem for us. Um, I guess we go Brain Maggot to try to attack their... To try to attack their Collected Companies, and Death Touch seems pretty good against them, so we'll go up those, go down Combat Celebrant, go down one of the Oxes, and go down... I guess Masker Worm actually seems pretty bad. Um, and then maybe... Uh, maybe one of our Cyclers and... Uh, maybe one of the Cathartic Reunions is fine. We... yeah, we just... we just really drew a lot of lands that game. We drew a ridiculous... we almost drew enough to hard cast or Drake Seth just naturally. We didn't even have any, like, Cathartic Reunions or Cyclers to, like, draw us into those lands. We just naturally drew enough lands to almost hard cast our Draco Seth, but yeah, we uh, we got kind of wrecked by the Clothis too. If, if the Clothis didn't eat our Godfarer's Gift and we were able to get back two Godfarer's Gifts so we could be putting eight uh, power and toughness on the battlefield every turn, then we might have had a chance. Alright, game two against Gruul. So we'll play first. And yeah, it seems fine. We got Death Touchers, we got Brain Maggots, we got Removal, and we can even cycle turn one, so that's what we'll probably do. Cycle the Horror... Yeah, and we will go Brain Maggot, try to snipe something good out of their hand. 
ideally like a collected company or okay well we gotta I guess either of these removes our creature we'll take the glava coil that removes it a little cleaner they gotta spend three mana to remove it with the cinder vines so that's fine yep 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 go to combat attack we'll go ahead and crack this fable passage now to get some lands out of our deck so we're less likely to mill them with our Mire Triton, although not by much. But we'll play the Mire Triton. Mill two. Okay, both creatures, not bad. Here comes the Gruel Spellbreaker. With haste. Wow, okay, yeah, we'll definitely trade that. Opponent hits us for two and loses their creature, sure. God Pharaoh's Gift's pretty good. Um, yeah, we're going to go... I guess we cycle now in case we hit a land. So we'll cycle the Draineth Stinger. There's the land. Play Fable Passage, crack it. Again, thin the deck a bit for Meyer Triton. Get a mountain this time. Meyer Triton, mill. And we're looking in much better shape this time. Opponent Gruel Spellbreaker, sure. We do just have a removal spell for that in the form of Ravenous Chupacabra. Big Chups, and here comes Big Chups. Opponent can blow up the Brain Maggot, which is fine. And attack. I imagine our opponent's just gonna center vines, get back their lava coil. Okay. Brain Maggot is an enchantment creature. They may not know that, I guess. Possibly. I don't know why. I guess they bring it in to blow up the Godfarer's Gift, but it may be in a position where they feel like they have to blow up the Brain Maggot. I don't know. Not yet. Okay. Um, yeah, we will go to combat. Attack with our Death Toucher. See if they flash in the Collect Company. No, not yet. Alright, so we're going to go Mire Triton. And Tranith Stinger. As a creature. And we can start cycling like this Horde of the Broken Lands to, to ping our opponent a bit. Alright, so they did. They were just bluffing the uh, Collect Company that time. Yorvo, sure. Now they don't have the mana for the Collected Company, so... Cathartic Reunion's not bad. So we're going to go Cathartic Reunion, hit, hit. It means we don't get the... Sure. So we, they ding us for one. That's fine. It means we don't get the cycle trigger for Dranith Stinger, but... Refilling our hand seems pretty good. Well... Alright. <laughs> cycle a bit more. Fable Passage. Go and get a Mountain for the Ceridon. Next turn we can Ravenous Chupacabra the, the Yorvo. Uh, mountain's fine. I think we get in with both of our Death Touchers here. If opponent wants to trade Yorvo with one of them, that's fine. And if not, we can just take the four next turn. Even if they, like, Ember Cleave us. Like, if that's all they're doing next turn, that's fine. We can just Chupacabra them and take the eight. Or take the ten, I guess. Yeah, sure. That's fine. Hit us for ten if you want to, opponent. We're at 22. Yep, there's the Ember Cleave. But this means they won't have a creature next turn, which means we should be fine. So, opponent hits us for 10. He will cycle, ping our opponent. We maybe just kill him this turn, too. Well, there's a Brain Maggot. Ooh, Drake Seth. Alright, we're gonna go... Is there anything they could have? Any sort of untap? I can't think of anything, so I think we just attack with everything here. And they're dead. For all they know, they, they're dead. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, that went a lot better, um, where we didn't draw a million lands in a row. Anything else we want to bring in? I think I think we brought in the right stuff last time, so let's just run it back. All right, up against our opponent's cruel deck, and pff, it's tempting. I don't think we can keep this, though. Okay, this is a much better hand. We're much happier about this. couple death touchers. I guess we just go down to Ceridon. It's fine. Opponent's mulliganing a good bit, trying to find some graveyard hate, but little do they know, we've got some death touchers that don't really need the graveyard, so we may just run that out turn one just to start gaining some life. That might be better than running out the Stitcher Supplier. Wow, they went down to four even looking for graveyard hate. Sure. Well, seeing as they went down that far, I think we're going to just try to be as fast as we can, which in this deck means stitcher supplier see if we can combo off before they pull their scavenging gooses or whatever graveyard hate they've dug so deep for cinder vines sure 
There, it is a piece of hate, so we will attack. Play Stitcher Supplier. No, some more. See if we can find our Croxes. No, no Croxes yet. Vampire of the Dark Moon. So we're getting pretty close to if... I mean, we, we already have enough stuff in the graveyard. If we draw a Croak so we can get it back as soon as we get to four mana. Godfarer's Gift is not really what we wanted to see, but we'll just attack. Hit our opponent for a good chunk. Okay, they're going to Bone Crush. Sure. Opponent, and we'll just go Vampire. Play the Stinger. You know what? I think we're actually going to cycle the Stinger. We probably should have done a main phase now that I think about it, but I don't think uh, Stinger as a creature is going to do all too much this this game. So we're just going to cycle it and look for like our look for our payoff cards. Maybe a Croxa. Okay, well there's a Horror, so we're going to go to combat, attack with everything. See if our opponent trades in their their Goblin for our Death Toucher. Well, not yet. Okay. Play Fable Passage, crack it. Then our deck a bit. We got a Swamp, I think. We are just going to cycle this Horror now. And, yeah, we're going to play the Gate to the Afterlife. I mean, the thing is, the Cinder Vines can blow up our Godfarer's Gift or Gate to the Afterlife, so there's not much point in, like, waiting till we have five mana so we can activate it before they blow it up. Because if we do that, they just blow up our Godfarer's Gift. Yeah, okay. So opponent blows that up. So now any future Godfarer's Gifts are uh, online, which is good. Sure, opponent's just going to keep goblining it in. Sure. Temple. Alright, we'll play the temple. Put that to the bottom. Get in for one. Pass turn. Opponent plays a land of RL. It's interesting. I guess that means they have a two drop in hand, because I think otherwise they just play the the giant, right? We are just going to trade and chump. See if we can hit a Kroxa, because we have enough... Wow, we cannot hit Kroxas for the life of us. Okay, uh, no attacks. We, if we can hit a Kroxa at any point, we would be in pretty good shape here. Questing Beast, well, that was a really good draw. So if we draw a land, we're good. If we draw... Well, Gate's fine. Alright. Gate should do it. Activate Gate. Get a... Godbearer's Gift. What do we want to get back? Huh. I guess Stitcher Supplier's fine. Try to hit a Kroxa so we can actually cast something next turn as well. Wow, we cannot... <laughs> we cannot for the life of us hit anything, can we? Uh, the best draw they would have here is Embercleave for sure. That's the, that's the big thing we're afraid of, because that just kills us regardless. Okay. We will trade and trade and take the two. I think they're just setting themselves up to to kill us with a with the Ember Cleave here. It's probably their their only real hope. Okay. Oh my goodness. Okay. Can we hit a Kroxa? If we hit a Kroxa, I think we just win. We we can't. Good God. Alright, all the Kroxas are at the bottom of our deck. So I guess we can just get back Ravenous Chupacabra, blow up one of their creatures. Let's see, and if they Embercleave here, they hit us for six, so that's fine. So Embercleave doesn't kill us, so we're not going to leave back the Chupacabra. We're going to put a clock on him here. When it passes, sure. Alright, well, we're okay with this, because we can just hard cast our God Pharaoh's <laughs> Gift. <laughs> Alright, and go to combat, double reanimate, and this should be enough to, to get there. So we had kind of awkward draws here. We weren't able to find our Croxes, but you know what? That's okay. So we'll get back the Lifelink Death Touchers. And that is going to be definitely enough to lock up this game. You know what, we'll get back a Ravenous Chupacabra too. Just give them no creatures on board. They're dead here regardless, but why not go for the Flawless Victory? Oh, okay, Collected Company. Sure. And they scoop it up. Alright. They were going to have to hit really well not to be dead, and even... Uh, I don't know if they had a hit that not only leaves them not dead, but in a favorable position. So, yeah, we... uh. Gruel Collected Company, it, it it just destroyed us game one with that, uh, hitting that Clothus off the Collected Company, and we drew really awkwardly these games, we just drew tons of lands, like, it's really, really peculiar for this deck to just draw that many lands naturally. We do have a lot of cyclers, so, 
you know, this game was more understandable because we're, we're more than halfway through our deck, so hitting seven lands is fine. Yeah, but game one, it was ridiculous. We had no cyclers, no uh, no cathartic reunions, no real card draw. We just naturally drew, like, seven lands. So, anyway, uh, we were able to <laughs> to get it done here against against Gruul. Gruul is pretty pretty strong tech. Embercleave is a messed up card, and Collected Company is a pretty good addition to the deck, but we, uh, we kind of overpowered them a bit, so sweet. <laughs> All right, the deck felt awesome, really flexible, really fun. I really like that even though this deck is like really graveyard based, we don't just lose if our opponent has like a Graph Digger's Cage or even if they have like an Ash Shock and exile our graveyard, it's not like over. Uh, we have a, we can kind of shift into a mid range plan, get those threats off the battlefield, and then we can shift back into our graveyard based plan and kind of go off once we've cleared those up. So deck felt really good. And now we'll talk about potential upgrades you can make to this Rakdos God Pharaoh's Gift deck. So first and foremost, the most obvious update you can make to the deck is just increasing the number of pre-existing rares. You know, going up to like four copies of Croxa is just a really fantastic card that fits perfectly in this deck. Croxa is already one of the strongest cards in the historic format and has seen a lot of play already. Um, but the fact that it benefits so well from us filling up our graveyard and the fact that it even triggers our gates to the afterlife, it's even better. You know, if we play a gate and then we play a Croxa, the sacrifice trigger is going to gain us a life and let us loot. So it just fits so perfectly in this deck. And the same with Oxfagonus. We do want to be careful with how many escape preachers we slot into our deck. Um, we, once we have like four copies of Croxa and four copies of Ox, I think we're going to be like competing for those resources in our graveyard a lot, especially because we actually want to, you know, bring some of that stuff back with Gift of the God Pharaoh as well. So we want to be a little bit careful, you know, if you already have another copy of Ox, if you already have another copy of Croxa, maybe try that, but I don't think go up the full four copies of Croxa and the full four copies of Ox. I think there's some split here, you know, either like four of Croxa and two of the Ox, or maybe three of each, something like that. Um, but definitely you could tr you could slot in some more of those. And, and the same goes for like Masker Worm and Combat Celebrant. They're just good cards that, uh, you know, if we had more in our budget, we'd probably be running at least a couple copies of these. So you can try slotting in some more copies if you already have them, or if you want to try spinning the wild cards, they, they're they pretty good in this deck. Outside of just more copies of cards we already have in the deck, a card I'd really like to try in the sideboard of this deck is Blacklands Paragon. So Blacklands Paragon is a two mana three one with flash. And when it enters the battlefield, a knight, including itself, gains lifelink and death touch until the end of the turn. So it can kind of be a creature removal spell in our deck, uh, you know, against any sort of aggressive deck, against any sort of green deck, even like questing beasts this have enough, this has enough power to block questing beasts. So being able to side this in against like aggressive or stompy deck seems really great. And it's just really good when we bring it back with our God Pharaoh's gift because it comes back as a 4-4 and it still gets to enter the battlefield ability. So it comes back as a 4-4 with death touch and lifelink until the end of the turn. So we can swing in, gain four life, you know, our opponent will have a hard time blocking it because it'll have death touch that turns. So similar to Croxa, it's a card that's already kind of good, but with our deck in particular, it seems like it would fit in really well. It kind of gives us some removal while still being a creature to mill over into our graveyard. Uh, if, we, if we flash it out to trade with something, it'll trigger our gate to the afterlife. So it, it, all in all, it just seems like it fits pretty well in our deck. I'd love to put a few copies in our sideboard. The Cavaliers would be really interesting to try in this deck. Both the red and black Cavaliers have really great enter the battlefield abilities for this deck. Cavalier of Night being able to sacrifice a creature to destroy one of our opponent's creatures so we could like sack a citrus supplier, mill ourselves over some more and also blow up one of our opponent's creatures. Then when it dies, we can get that Citrus Supplier back to mill even more. Uh, Cavalier of Flame similarly allows us to kind of discard our hand, draw a new hand, which goes, with, you know, it is exactly what we want to be doing in this deck anyway with cards like Cathartic Reunion, you know, filling up our graveyard with more creatures. So these are some good reanimatable threats and hitting five mana actually isn't that hard, even though we're only a 20 land deck. We have all of these cyclers that were pretty consistently hitting our land drops up to like four and five mana without that much of an issue. Uh, so you might want to try these if you don't like if, if you just don't have a copy of Masker Worm or Drake of Seth and you just want to slot a couple of these in, I think they would be pretty great as well as castable cards that also are pretty good to reanimate. And Cavalier of Flame even has some additional benefit. With all of our mana untapped, we can get it back as a 4-4 thanks to God Pharaoh's Gift. And then we can use all that mana, we can pump it into it and really boost the attack of all of our creatures. So potentially it puts us in a position to to really like hammer in a bunch of damage out of nowhere. So both of these would be interesting to try. And I'm not sure exactly what you cut. We just have some pieces that are you can't really cut out of here, like Mired Triton and our Stitcher Supplier and our Cyclers are pretty important, so I think you would want to cut like maybe some Chupacabras, maybe these are just upgrades to Chupacabras, uh, maybe some of the other Mythics and Rares, but I think these would be interesting to try and be pretty good in the deck. Fiend Artisan would be a pretty interesting creature to try, it would just be a double black creature in our deck, so even though it's hybrid green-black, we don't actually have to move into green to play this card, um, but basically it is a 1-1 one, one on its front half and then we can pay 1 mana plus X to sacrifice something to go get another creature, because 
so much of our deck is creatures, you know, because our removal spells are creatures and, and our card draw is creatures, being able to just tutor a creature out of our deck by sacrificing another creature, which is, you know, we can sacrifice a Stitcher Supplier, which we want to be de dead anyway, that'll trigger a Gate to the Afterlife, that'll let us tutor out what we need to deal with the current situation, so Fiend Artisan feels like it would be pretty good in the deck, and it even is really great to bring back with Godfarer's Gift, because it still gets its plus one, plus one ability for each creature card in our graveyard, which should be a lot, seeing as all of our deck is creature cards and we're milling ourselves over so much, um, but it'll come back as a 4-4 four, four base instead of a 1-1 one, one base, so it kind of gets an automatic plus three, plus three, plus all the other plus one, plus one for each creature in the graveyard it'll have, so it'll just be this huge, gigantic threat that'll be able to tutor up what we need out of our deck, so it can kind of serve a dual purpose as both the finisher and sort of a card selection engine, so uh, that would, maybe is worth running over our other finishers like Mask or Worm and Draco Seth, maybe maybe just Fiend Artisans and Croxus are enough to get there, it'd be interesting to try at least. Archfiend of Ifnir would also be a great card, potentially to replace Mask or Worm, or to put into our sideboard and bring in against creature-based decks, because it is a 5-4 flyer, and whenever we cycle or discard another card, so if we Cathartic Reunion to discard a couple cards, we get two triggers off of this, and we put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature our opponent's control, so with like a Cathartic Reunion, with our cyclers like Draneth Stinger and Horror of the Broken Lands and Desert Sheridan, etc., uh, Archfiend of Ifnir is a great way to just sort of spread minus one, minus one crowns across the board, wipe out all of our opponent's creatures, and we already sort of have the cycling cards to pay it off with our Horror and our Desiceradon and our Draneth, and it is another cycler itself to like pay off our Draneth Stinger, so uh, it also would make our mana a little even more consistent by having another uh, low mana cycler, although cycling for two is definitely a lot worse than our one mana cyclers here. Um, that is, you know, it doesn't fix us quite as well, because we kind of have to take off a turn a lot of the time to cycle Archfiend of Ifnir, where with these one mana cyclers we can just kind of sneak it in alongside another spell a lot of the times. Um, can't really do that with two, two mana cyclers quite as easily, so uh, I would maybe try one or two of these in the main deck and then like the rest in the sideboard because I do think it just shines in creature based matchups. It's sort of a similar to Mask or Worm, it's sort of a wrath on our deck that we can pull out of the graveyard with our Godfarer's Gift, but I don't know if you want to run four copies main deck, <laughs> even though we do have the cyclers to pay it off. I think probably it's better uh, maybe as a sideboard card, maybe with one or two in the main deck. And the final upgrades we'll talk about are some rare lands you could slot in. Primarily, Castle Lock Twain would be great in this deck. It's just a way we can kind of dig out some card advantage because we are likely to cycle in. You know, we, we do, even though we're only running a 20 land deck, we do have some propensity with all these cyclers to flood out a little bit because when we're cycling all these cards, we'll eventually hit lands that we can't cycle, right? So um, we do have some propensity. So if we want to run like a couple castles to kind of offset that a bit, if we just run out of action, Castle Lock Twain gets his way to draw additional cards. I don't think I'd run any copies of Castle Empress. We're a little bit more black focused than red focus anyway, and I just don't think it's worth the the potential of a land that comes into play tapped to actually play Castle Emperor. But Castle Log Twain, I would definitely try running a copy or two. And besides the castles, there's also Phyrexian Tower. So Phyrexian Tower is just a busted land that came out of a jumpstart. Phyrexian Tower is a land that comes into play untapped taps for a colorless mana, or we can sacrifice a creature and add two black mana. So that's really, really, really powerful, because we want to be sacrificing some of our creatures, like Stitcher Supplier, to get its dies ability. And also, you can do some tricks with Kroxa. You can, like, play Kroxa, and while its triggers are on the stack, you can sacrifice it to Phyrexian Tower, because it's going to sacrifice itself anyway. So you can sacrifice it, make two black mana, maybe play another two drop that turn when you would have, you know, been tapped out otherwise. So it's got a lot of power to it. It is a colorless land, and we are... It does kind of get a little awkward with, with how our mana base, you know, we just don't have that many lands, so slotting in a colorless land is a little awkward, but I think running one copy of Phyrexian Tower is worth it. And anyway, that's going to wrap it up for our Rakdos God Pharaoh's Gift deck. Again, God Pharaoh's Gift is one of my favorite rares out of the Amonkhet block. I built around it in EDH a lot, and it's just a really, I don't know, it's just a fun card. Figuring out some extra synergies for like the 4-4 and haste that you get off of it, it seems pretty fun. Just a really fun deck to me. It's both graveyard focused, which I really like, and also not totally graveyard dependent, which I also really like, because it does kind of suck when you just have like one plan and then a, a hate card kills you. Uh, we were able to see in our matches that that's not really true for this deck. We're, we're able to play through the hate cards, and that's always a really good sign uh, for a kind of a synergistic deck like this. So anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed watching, because I sure enjoyed playing this awesome deck, and uh, this has been 2D, and I'll see you next time.